Coco Road is literally a, a, a road in Geismar, Louisiana, where my family um, was, was kind of originated, um, where we have a lot of land. And Coco Road was uh, named after my great grandmother, Sedonia Coco. Um, and so the house on Coco Road is a kind of tribute to her and kind of the origins of my family and the story of migration mm -hmm. and, as you, as you mentioned earlier, resistance and perseverance and um, even my great-grandmother who migrated west with my grandfather to Los Angeles kind of in search of a better life. Mm -hmm. So Coco Road is significant as kind of an anchor to, um, to so much of who I am. Someone told me once that they feel like the, a lot of the women in my life, mm -hmm. my mentors, the elders, my mother, um, have been described as redwoods. Mm -hmm. And I think what, what, they, what that means is their strength and power, perseverance and brilliance and um, a community of people that actually need each other and support each other. So that's why this kind of was so beautifully put to me once that they described this community of women, including my mother, as redwoods. And so growing up, I always wanted to tell a story about that life experience. Um, and I'm really lucky that I had this one moment in Grenada. Um, my mom moved us from Oakland, California to join and be a part of this um, kind of socialist experiment um, called the Grenada Revolution in the 1980s. So if you can imagine, I mean, you're from the Bay Area, in the 1980s, I'm a young kid growing up, beautiful city, I'm proud of where I'm from, um, but Ronald Reagan was president. Um, crack cocaine was very real on the streets and was destroying black communities. Um, and I think for my mother and her generation, um, a lot of the Redwoods felt like there had to be a better option than what we were living. All of a sudden, there's, the drugs came in so heavy it was scary, but it destroyed the entire city of Oakland. I mean, there's some discussion now where that came from. Entire black communities were destroyed. With all of my efforts to put you in a good school and try to balance it, there was still, we could sit on that, that hill in East Oakland and hear gunfire all down the hill all night. It was very disappointing to see all the work that we've done being overrun by drugs. It was not a happy time in the black community anywhere in the States. That was not an environment to raise children. And so this island of Grenada kind of hit her radar because um, they were doing something that she'd only imagined happening for herself back in Oakland. Um, so she packed us up and we went to go be a part of this revolution. And so we were there and if you can imagine healthcare being free and accessible, education, literacy, mm -hmm. all the things that are just so basic in terms of human needs um, that were happening on a small island um, nation with people who look like us. So that was just like life changing. And so I knew at some point I had to tell this story. And I started, I don't know, 17 years ago. I'd like to ask Sister Angela to make a few brief introductory remarks. I'm here in Free Grenada for the very first time. The experiences that I've had uh, here in Grenada have confirmed in a very powerful way where we are headed, uh, what the future of the entire planet uh, ought to look like. This beautiful, powerful militant revolution. My sister Fania and I were so excited by what we saw. We were so struck by the enthusiasm of, of the, not only the leaders, but the everyday people. For us, Grenada, especially for black people, really marked a new moment in history. It just sort of captured the imagination of us. Here's a socialist government, uh, a revolutionary government right here in our own hemisphere. Well, she's brilliant. I mean, she's brilliant. Um, and she's part of that, that group that I mentioned earlier, and you don't really recognize that you're growing up around people who have changed the world, literally. Um, and Angela's one of those people. Vanya Davis, her sister, is also one of those people. My mother, Erica Huggins. Um,
but Angela is brilliant. I mean, I learn, I feel like I've been learning from her um, since day one. Um, and as a kid, you would sit around in the living room and hear, overhear conversations about um, the world they were imagining and all the work they were doing to, to get to that place, whether it was, um, you know, in Angela's case, being part of the, the, the Free Angela Davis Committee, which my mother was, um, Fania and my mother went to Cuba and worked together. So there was always like kind of stuff happening around me. It wasn't until much later that I realized the kind of brilliant influence and contribution um, that Angela has made and continues to make. I mean, the fact that the house on Cocoa Road is picked up by a ray, this is literally like the perfect marriage, honestly. Um, this film is so deeply personal. It's about my family, it's about community, it's about um, social justice. So it's really like, I mean, what else can you ask for? When you, when you start off with an idea yeah. that's kind of small and personal and intimate, and then it becomes something that the world gets to see. Um, so that, that I have to give it up to her right. They've really done an amazing job. Well, this film, um, I mean, how do I say it? It's from such a deep place mm -hmm. that I can't imagine making films for the rest of my life that don't come from spaces that are um, a part of myself, a part of my community, a part of my family, um, because those life experiences are valuable. And we are, I think, in this really incredible moment where we're reshaping how narratives are being shared, mm -hmm. um, particularly with what Array is doing. I mean, to pay attention and, and to put um, energy into stories that do not often make the mainstream media headlines, to invest in stories that are three-dimensional, that have subtleties mm -hmm. about who we are as people, that aren't like didactic, kind of two-dimensional things that, that um, we often see in the industry. Um, it's really, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Well, I do find that we as people, we as human beings, particularly right now in the world, mm -hmm. are questioning um, this way of doing things, because it's not working. Some parts of it are absolutely phenomenal, right? Yeah. But there's a lot of, of what's happening right now that um, is destructive, that is not about um, the sustainability of the planet, it's not about taking care of your family, it's kind of an individualistic approach to life, and I think we're getting back to a collective consciousness, which I think is really nice, and you can feel it with movements, um, around the world, Black Lives Matter. Um, so it's an interesting time. And the Grenada Revolution, for me, planted some seeds that there are other ways to do it. Um, and so even just that little glimpse that I was so fortunate to have as a nine-year-old um, kind of reaffirmed that there's, an, there's another way. Key takeaway. Wow. You know, I've been told that this film has a lot happening in it. Like, we, there's Children of War, there's the Cold War, there's Black Power Movement, there's COINTELPRO, FBI, there's um, Grenada and the Revolution. I mean, we cover and touch on so many things, but what was really important for me was to keep it in a lens, or through a lens of a family. Um, and so I hope people walk away feeling like there's value in their stories because you don't necessarily have to be Angela Davis, uh, right? Um, or we have icons and famous people who we appreciate, um, but that people walk away feeling like they are empowered to just imagine a safe place to live. I mean, the simplicity of that, um, a safe place to live, being able to um, do anything you want. Um, my mom took a really big risk in kind of packing us up, but she was packing us up to do something beautiful that she, she, she was able to um, she was able to do that and I'm grateful so I hope people kind of see that in themselves and, and imagine what's possible. My name is Damani Baker, I am the director of The House on Cocoa Road. Uh, check out The House on Cocoa Road for the rest of the week around the country and on Netflix June 30th. Um, 
And for more information, check out Array Now and come join us.